Alarm. I have Ray of Sickness, Witch Bolt, and Dissonant Whispers. Okay, attack, attack, and attack. Dissonant and Whispers is a uh, wisdom saving throw. And I've got move and attack action. Kind of like False Life, too. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet spell. D4 plus 4 temporary hit points for an hour. It's like armor. Yeah, Trevor's totally a, a, a bow tie kind of guy. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he's secretly a Hoovian. Yeah, I'll take False Life. Wear it with his fez. Oh, I am going to choose. For my arcane school, I'm going to choose Illusion. Ooh. So I would, I would get the improved minor illusion. I would get the minor illusion cantrip, but I already have it, so I get any other cantrip. All right, I'm here. I have a quick question. Um, on Jack of all trades, what do I do about the stuff I'm proficient in? Do I just take away the proficiency and put Jack of all trades there? No, uh, Jack yeah. of all trades only applies to things that you're not already proficient in. Mm-hmm. All right, cool beans. So on the skill, in the drop down, there's proficient, jack of all trades. So if you're proficient, just choose proficient. If all the ones that you're not proficient, you choose jack of all trades. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the elemental evil spells. Capusa tries to do a backflip. Sweet backflip. Oh, and John, just because I assume you like that kind of music, here's a song I recommend. Um, a, a Lion's Roar type of music. Oh, cool. Thanks. I, I recently found the... Everyone can check it out. It's, the singer is a guest singer from Mike. Mike's the old dude playing guitar. And my minor illusions can now do sound and image. Nice. Cool. Yes. Okay. Illusionist. Yeah, and while everybody's hanging out, um, just kind of inform people, we are here for a while now on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Yeah. Right now, um, with and you'll see common faces. I know. Yep. You'll see Trevor, Nathan, Dwayne, and Lex all, all three of those days, and then we'll see a few in and out related to uh, elsewhere. And Kyle. Kyle, you'll see on Thursday also. Uh, same time, same place. Different stuff. Okay, guys. Right. Everybody gets 45 more XP. I screwed up the XP. What is the XP for level 2? I mean, I know we're not near it, but... Uh, 900. Or level 3. Level 900. Three. You said 45 more XP? Yes. So we're at 350. Or I am. Yeah, I am. yeah. That sounds right. And what, oh yeah, what's next level? You just said 900? 900, yep. Okay. And I'll make sure and tell Kyle when he comes back. I'm here. Oh, oh find okay. A of experience and I just uh, wanted to remind you guys too that we start one half hour later on Friday. Yeah, seven, okay. Have you, did you tell Christy or have you heard from Christy about it? Yep, she's good to go. So yes! She's in the chat. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, you just made my week, Dwayne. I can't even awesome. tell you. The last time I got to play D and D, I was in high school. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, this is overdue. Then. This is like nineties. <laughs> so are you, you going to be one of the one of the good players, or are you just going to be like totally obstructionist and? No, I'm going to try really hard to be a good player. I I am not. I've played very little compared to how much I've GM'd. So I, I might not be a great player, but I'm going to try. <laughs> we'll have fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Of course we will. I will not rules wa- lawyer you. That I can promise. Yeah, that's cool. Although I, I do I do appreciate people like you guys, I totally wouldn't mind because you know the rules. So, you know, if, if I'm getting something wrong, that's fine. You know, I don't mind <laughs> if you can point it out. I'm, I know because I, well, I run out of processing power. That's what I find. Right. Yeah. So for you know, my, I just I run out of I run out of RAM, and I start forgetting shit. So, 
Yeah, just, I mean, I'm fine saying like, well, just so you know, this is how it is in in the book. But if you're like, well, fuck that, I'm doing it this way because yeah. I'm the DM, then that's cool. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Awesome, very succinct way to put it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Chrissy. I'm probably gonna lean toward more. Um, just if I don't really know how to handle it, kind of come up with some way to either give advantage or disadvantage. And so yeah. Way. Yeah. You know, it's such a simple, elegant, and cool way to do it. So yeah. Now, uh, let's, do, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, do we roll for our hit points right now since it's short rest? Are you rolling or are you taking the average? I'm in uh, to get health back. No, you guys are doing a long rest, so you get them uh, all back. Okay, cool. And you get right. a hit die back if you've used any. Lex, these three, what are now three, I guess, D and D campaigns are the only thing shown on the channel right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do some update. I'm gonna do some work on Starwalker bot. To yep, that's it. There's this one, Tyranny of Dragons, and Dwayne's yeah. Elemental Evil. I think that's originally it. on here. I had New World Explorers, and um, yeah, those are done. The other one. Yep. Obsidian Monolith is done, and Ninth World Explorers. I, I axed it. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> um, I just like, I just lost interest in doing it i i've been running numenera exclusively for like a year and a half and i'm just kind of burnt out on it and i'm really digging D D. and i really like if i run something else i want to run star wars i really want to try that out more Dwayne was in my one group the one time i ran star wars oh that that never went beyond that i thought no nope, that, that was oh, yeah. it what what was your character a Wookiee archaeologist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. I could totally see Dwayne as a Wookiee player. Oh, God. <laughs> it was pretty great, yeah. I saw an actual play of Edge of the Empire, and uh, one of the players was playing a Wookiee, and he had all these, like, Chewbacca sound bites that oh, he would nice. play anytime his character said something. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was originally planning on getting a sound by a soundboard thing to play for Tyvel whenever he changes to play like a bear or wolf or whatever, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't go along with it enough that I was like, eh, it's not really that worth it. Um But uh yeah, I had to work on Starwalker bought after this. Session. So everybody should have gotten a total of one seventy five XP plus what you had before. So. John, myself, and Dwayne are at 350. Uh, Kapusta is at 210, I think. Ish? No. 175. Total. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'm at 525. So I'm thinking about putting my uh, dark dark elf stuff on the on my blog. I'm not sure if I'll get in trouble or not. If I'm okay doing that or not. <laughs> Cuz none of it's actually my own ideas. It's all uh, I have the dark elf handbook from like second edition. So like that's where all of that is coming from. They really nerfed the dark elves and I totally get it. Like if you're going to play a dark elf in like a party with you guys that they're way overpowered. But since the campaign is going to be all dark elves, I was like, Hey, we're going all out. What if I told you I can't really play as a slave, somebody slave. <laughs> sure. Well, if we have more than four players, we're going to have to do something like that. Because I feel like I would have a lot of fun role playing as a slave. Sure. Yeah, but what if uh, you end up I, not getting to do anything? Well, that's maybe fine. you could be that, like Chrissy's point. slave that she takes with her everywhere, like a bodyguard kind of thing or something like that. Or no, sex I mean, slave. Like, I don't know. Full blown <laughs> carry my shit slave. I'll do it because that actually kind of sounds fun to me. Oh, that reminds me. I'm thinking of making up. Well, I want to make a few new backgrounds, but one of them I'm thinking about is uh, masseuse. Because dark elves sleep. are are actually really big in the massages because they're yeah. so tense all the time. So I thought that'd be a fun background to write up. I'm like massage therapist. Kind of <laughs> on the idea of the Minzo brands, and I'm gonna be a male rogue, and he, I mean, he's gonna go along with everything, of course. But I'm kind of thinking I want to go to see about making a bit of an well, anarchist. 
like a rah rah change the fight like, the power. He's, yeah, he's kind of cool. loose. Well, it makes uh, sense if you're a male. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, I'm a little confused though about what that uh, is. That for the Greek thing? The, no. Um, campaign? No. Or is this what is this exact? I'm old. Confused. Oh, I did a new thread called Menzo Burns On. It's for that. It's a it's a totally different campaign because I'm like here, there, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> my campaigns list on my front thing is just long. Yeah, I, like there's so many things everywhere. I'm trying to get confused. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is much more long term because I have to build a whole world for that. <laughs> Which. Uh... This I just have to come up with a city, and a lot of it's already done. So. Okay. Well, onward with the adventure, I think. Yes. Let's do it. Well, we have uh, these goods that we need yes. to bring back to the. Uh, the it store. is. It is quite a bit more than you can carry. We'll, You'll need we'll, uh, like a wagon. Yeah. Well, we'll get a bunch. We'll get what we can carry. Okay. The other thing you could do is uh, tell just tell what's her face where she can find it, and maybe make a, arrangements with Yemek that, you know, he'll let the humans come and get their stuff. That's another way Let's you could do that. go. We do that. Surely Yemek will keep his word, right? Exactly. <laughs> and we can have Roy be the, no, not the negotiator. Never mind. Yeah, you gotta keep Roy away because um, Roy, as you guys are sleep, like as we're settling down, discusses the possibility. Why don't we just go back and prevent them from killing any more humans? It is the good and just thing. Here's a cool picture of some yeah. goblins. Hmm. Glare tastic, but good. Yeah. yeah. There, there, That's the glare is gone. <laughs> yeah, please. They're more of kind of like a gray brown skin than green skins, but whatever. Here's uh, some mushrooms. Mm. Mm. Like our Delicious. mushrooms. Okay. Well, just as uh, the, not all dark elves are totally evil, not all goblins are. I'm sure Yimik has, well, maybe not Yimik, but I know <laughs> Glurp had a, a spark of Yeah. Goodness. Yeah, that's something I'm really going to play with because I like that they're doing that now where, you know, everything isn't like so cut and dry. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more wiggle room with alignments and stuff, so you yeah, never you know. Should your, you should change your character in, a, in the Friday Night Campaign to a goblin. I totally allow that. <laughs> I just a love goblin, your goblin wizard voice that much. <laughs> yeah. Well, my 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 wizard could talk like that. My elf. <laughs> I yeah. really know. In a second, you could do that. In a second. <laughs> It's like the only voice I can do is my goblin voice. <laughs> you always be a goblin. Yeah. You get that cool disengage thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they're actually pretty badass. Minus the four hit points or five or eight or whatever. All right. So let's change the map. I'm just glad I leveled up. A little bit more breathing room now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is the first time I think I've played just a straight martial character that didn't have any tricks up its sleeve. So now I see where Steve gets on about the whole move and attack turn. Move yeah. And attack turn thing. Um, but it's cool. Roy will figure out something eventually. Battlemaster will add to that. Yeah, I mean, Fighter's a great multi class class, too. I mean, yeah, I just don't see Roy being anything else than a fighter, though. Battlemaster is really fun. Yeah, so you, that's, you have some things to manage with that, and, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is Fandolin. Uh, you guys arrived there a few a few hours later, and well, I'm just showing you the marked one, so you can see what's there and where things are. Let's go to the Lion's Shield and see if that shield makes that roar again. Yeah. <laughs> like motion activated roar. It's going to be even better. Yes. Oh, the second level can... roar now. <laughs> That's right. Well, because I chose the illusion school, I can add a, a visual illusion to the sound. Very so cool. It, yeah. So it can be the MGM lion up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, where are you guys going? Lion Shield Coster. Lion Shield, Lion Shield Coster. Coster. Oh, here it is. Oh, hey, I don't think I read the actual description of the town last time. Oh, um, go ahead. So I will. <laughs> and uh, Trevor hasn't been here before, and Kyle hasn't been here. So the rutted track emerges from a wooded hillside, and you catch your first glimpse of Phandalin. The town consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built on old fieldstone foundations. More old ruins, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars, surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Most of the newer buildings are set on the sides of the cart track, which widens into a muddy main street of sorts as it climbs toward a ruined manor house on a hillside at the east side of town. As you approach, you see children playing on the town green and townsfolk tending to chores or running errands at shops. Many people look up as you approach, but all return to their businesses as you go by. And did you, you guys healed Sildar, right? Yes. Or did you? Um, oh, I guess we could have like done that. Oops. So he says, uh, uh, my friends, let us secure lodgings. I'm told the local inn is very quaint. It is. Yes. Yeah. The uh, Stonehill Inn. But I, we promised the uh, proprietor, uh, the, the coster, the coster monger at the Lion <laughs> Shield that we would go see her. Ah, of course. Lead, lead the way. I'm with you guys. At least until I get some ale. And what happened to our dwar our dwarven yeah, friend? Probably good. I good question. Gordon Roxier. <clears throat> oh, let's see if he knows that. Hmm. That was actually the reason we went into the right. goblin cave. Let's see. Okay, wait. okay. Here we go. Uh, he says, well, as you may or may not know, Gundren had a map showing the secret location of Wave Echo Cave, but the goblins took it from him when they captured us. Mm. I believe that Clark sent the map and Gundren to the chief of the Kragmaws at a place called Kragmaw Castle. I don't know where that might be, but it's possible someone in town might know. Right. Of course, they didn't know where the caves were. So. Hmm. I ask him, uh, do you know where any of the other Rock Seeker brothers are? Because I have a delivery for them. Uh, let's see here. So um, there are three Rock Seeker brothers. There's Gundren, Tharden, and Nundro. Uh, they recently located an entrance to the long lost Wave Echo Cave, site of the mines of the Fandelver's Pact. Could you repeat the brothers' names again? Uh, Gundren, Tharden, and Nundro. Gundren, Tharden, and Nundro. I can put <laughs> them in there. Uh... Nope. The, the, names, the naming is like, come I on. I know. I know. You know. Well, I was making it easy for people to make it, make it. You know, Abe, right. Beatrix, and Cato. You know, A, yeah. B, C, or something to help you remember. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so he didn't answer your question. Yeah. I know. I thought there was an answer to that in here. Yeah, grumpy old man rant over. Hmm. I mean, it'll was, come again. I mean, they were taken oh, yeah. by the. We're, we've we've already discovered that they were taken by the same group, and he was right. at that cave at some point. Um. So he tells you he is. Hang on here. He he met Gundren Rockseeker in Neverwinter and agreed to come with him to Fandolin. Um He's here, actually, in addition to that, to investigate the fate of a gentleman named Iarno Albrick, who is a human Arno. wizard and a fellow... Yeah, a fellow member of the Lord's Alliance who disappeared shortly after he arrived in Fandolin. He hopes to learn what happened to Iarno and assist Gundren in reopening the old mine and help restore Fandolin to a civilized center of wealth and prosperity. Well, with, with that sign, I think it's got to work. So I'll put his name. 
Yarno Albrecht. And since you guys, oh. I mean, it took you a few hours to get oh, here. Oh, so. Larno with an L? No, it's an I. Oh. Yarno. Yarno. Like Yorick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you guys have traveled a few hours to get here. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what else he would have told you. Yeah. Um, Clark, who was the bugbear you guys fought and was leading the goblin band, uh, had had orders to, to waylay Gundren. Uh, Sildar heard from the goblins that someone or something called the Black Spider sent word that the dwarf was to be brought to him. Sildar does not yeah, know who over to Libya left. or what the Black Spider is. And uh, uh, regarding Yarno, uh, the wizard traveled to the town about two months ago to establish some order here. Um, after the Lords of Lions received no word from Yarno, Sildar decided to investigate. Oh, I probably should have told you this before. He also uh, offered you guys 50 gold to escort him to town, which you've already done. <laughs> so you guys have 50 gold to split up that he pays yeah. you. 10 gold apiece. Hey. And... I thought sure he knew about the other two brothers, but it doesn't seem he does, but someone does. I know someone in here does because <laughs> I know I saw it somewhere. So there's, there's the Easter egg you guys can find. <laughs> All right. Only 1,476 more gold pieces till Roy gets his plate. <laughs> nice. What's well, you know, the Harpers just give that shit away. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> we'll put all the debris around the man. Or wait, no, it wasn't the Harpers. It what was your faction, Dwayne? Order of the Gauntlet. Yeah, yeah Order Gauntlet. of the Gauntlet. Yeah, they just give that yeah. shit away. Yeah, they yeah, just they sense. they just have like a hundred of those in their inventory. They're like, oh yeah, we got one to fit you. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, Kyle does bring up a good point. The manor looks like it could probably be in a little yeah. bit better repair. Yeah. Well, that's, it's the transgender matter. <laughs> that's what I read. <laughs> that's the first thing I read. To Ro Rocky Horror cool. Picture Show, anyone? Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, that's what's going on there. There's an adventure for you to write after. <laughs> picture Show, but don't tell them that's what you're doing. Oh, so my God. Slowly figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to try that, and I'll tell you guys how it goes. Right. And the whole party has to be like bards. <laughs> All yeah, right. Party of to the Coster Vonger. All right. The Coster. Do, 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 do. Why can't so I we all it? get 10 gold apiece? Cool. Yes. Hear that, Trevor? Yeah, I heard. Hanging above the front door of this modest trading post is a sign shaped like a wooden shield with a blue lion painted on it. Oh, I'm blue listening. lion sound like kind of sad, kind of a sad lion. Oh yeah, <laughs> roar! <laughs> Sings the blues. I really don't feel like roaring today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inside is Lenine Greywind. Yes, you guys met her Lenine. before. Lenine. Greetings, yeah. gentlemen. Did you find my stolen goods? Yes, we've located it, uh, but we did not have a wagon to go fetch it. And, uh, it, but it is uh, in good the, hands. Well, in bad hands, actually. Um, there's there are goblins there, but we made a deal that you can take your stuff back. Oh, excellent, excellent! Thank you so much. And she gives you guys fifty gold to split up. Each gold a piece. Uh, I'm sorry, was that each or total? Total. Yay. Sorry, NPCs don't seem to do math in D&D. &D. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> They're but just like, here, you split it up. Divisible by five, and I appreciate that. <laughs> 12 gold each. Yeah, it's nice that we have a group of five and not of like six. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> I bet it would have been 60 gold pieces. <laughs> Yeah, it would have magically become 60. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, as long as we're, uh, we're here and you're pleased with us, 
Have you heard of Yarno? Albrecht. Uh, Yarno. no, I'm I'm sorry, I haven't heard that name before. Uh, and uh, our friend here uh, is, is that a knitter? Yarno the knitter. <laughs> well, <laughs> the weaver. <laughs> Married oh, to the Weaver. We're gonna keep the Weaver and the last separated. Um, okay. And uh, 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 oh, and uh, how about any of the Rockseeker brothers or dwarves? Have you have you seen them? Uh, no, no, I haven't. You hear Capusa just shit in the background. <laughs> 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 the only word <laughs> ever ever said directly. <laughs> your your friend has quite the mouth on him. That's not polite, Costa. <laughs> they came all the way from Calport. And they said they were gonna be here and they're not here. I want my money. Well, this don't is... don't despair, my little friend. They they might be somewhere in town. I, I don't know everyone in this place. There's no reason for bad matters, Costa. And Roy looks and is like, when are you going to buy some pants? And why did I actually turn into Ulysses for a second there? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Kapusta starts crying, I guess. For the uninitiated, Kapusta doesn't have pants. Uh, <laughs> He's got a smock. In yeah. The <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Roy grumbles something about this town having more problems than he expected. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I, Albert. we we can go back to the Stonehill Inn again. That sounds like a great idea, Sildar says. Yeah, Sildar likes to go there. Take it's a very comfortable place. Thing. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that worked. So, No, actually, I cast that. Because I created no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, we go in the end. Okay. So, well, actually, um, Roy's not going to go to the inn. Roy is going to go to the Shrine of Luck instead, while everyone else goes off. Okay. Alatar would be interested in the Shrine of Luck too, because well, he noticed that while walking through town. Okay. I'll take our. Uh, God, I can't remember the stupid NPC's name there. Sildar? The, Sildar? Sildar. 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 I'll take Sildar to the end then. Sildar Ironcock. What? Iron. <laughs> Ironcock. <laughs> I'm going to just start making up my own names. She's <laughs> from the Brass Balls clan. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Hall Winter. I knew it was something like Ironcock. Hall. Hall winter. <laughs> Hall winter. Other than Cassidy two wits, I suppose. Uh, Note to self: make an NPC with the last name Ironcock. <laughs> of the clan Ironcocks. There could be a whole clan. Yeah, the yeah. dwarves. Yeah. Well, eventually there's rust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Ironcock dwarves of the tower. <laughs> The sad tale. The rest maybe maybe they tale. should be mithril cocks instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That won't rust. You just need to keep them well oiled. Wing That's wing. right. Anyways, That's right. We're talking about penis. <laughs> <I> hear, <guys. laughs> All righty then. All right. So a couple of you are going to the Shrine of Luck, and everyone else is going to the inn. Is that correct? What, what is the sleeping giant? What is the sleeping giant? Well, uh, it is a rundown tap house. Tap house. <laughs> yeah, like a like a tavern. A beer place. Beer beer okay. place. Place to drink beer. So you guys all gonna go to the Shrine of Luck together, or are you guys splitting up? Let's split up. Yeah, I think split split up. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen, right? Alatar's <laughs> coming to the boy. <laughs> All right, so who's going to the Shrine of Luck? Okay. Oh, oh, oh exactly half. Nice. Exactly half. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, I guess I guess I don't count. Never mind. <laughs> well, no, I'm Sildar. Sildar's like, screw this. I'm going to the freaking yeah, sure. inn. Okay, yeah, exactly. 
All right, Good. Shrine of Luck. Shrine Same. of Luck. Yes, I just had it. Hey, that helped. Helps if you can see. <laughs> All right, so this is a small temple to Timora made of stones of uh, various shape and color. And as you guys get close, you see a young elf woman. And as you step up, she says, greetings. Greetings to the, to the shrine of luck. May Timora bless you. How can I help you? I am Sister Grail. Yeah, we'll say that. Sister Grail. Awesome. Um, well, greetings, sister. Grail. May Timora shine on you as well. Grail. Excellent. Um, Roy, um, as they approach, he'll fetch out um, from uh, his purse a single gold coin and flip it to her. Okay. And because she's a priestess of Timora, I assume she has to catch it smoothly. Oh, yes. Um, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's a uh, Roy, you know, kind of, he's, he's not, he makes a polite nod to, um, the priestess, but he's more interested in taking one minute with the shrine. Sure. Um, after making his, you know, making his coins, giving his coin for Timara's luck. And then he's pretty much done. Elath <laughs> will, uh, sit down next to sister Grail and, uh, and be as charming as possible and ask her, has Timora's luck shined upon you these days, sister? She says, unfortunately, not as much as I would like. You oh, seem sorry. like capable, strong men and ladies. <laughs> looking at Lady Alap. <laughs> <laughs> men and lady. Okay. She says, uh, maybe, maybe you could help me, actually. Um, some of sure my superiors tasked me with speaking with a a banshee in the area named Agatha um, and trying to get some information from her about a spell book that she's rumored to be in possession of. Um, I went to her lair to to find her, but she would not appear for me. I did some research into her. And I believe if you were to take her this and she reaches into her pocket and she pulls out a, a very beautiful silver comb. Hmm. If you were to give her this and uh, appeal to her vanity, I, I think she might uh, give you the information that I'm looking for. Well, Sister Grail, I think that is a, a wonderful plan. Um, I think... We could certainly execute this plan for you. Uh, we just need you to tell us where this Banshee's lair is. Of course, of course. Uh, let me see. Roy knows nothing about Banshees, but Nathan knows that they get a once-a-day auto-kill. Uh, <laughs> a group like anyone within like a good distance. Oh, boy. Let me see. But Roy has no idea, so... She says, uh, it is in the nearby, uh, ruin of the town of Coneyberry. These names. Coney Coney Berry. Berry. Wait, wait, Co Coney Island? No, no, Coneyberry. It's, uh, near Coney Island, um, but, but not nearly as fun. <laughs> <laughs> she, it's like a Coney dog. She it's says like if, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like she, a cup of fruit covered in chili. She says, if you uh, do this for me, I will reward you with three healing potions. Oh, wow. That's very generous of you, sister. I'd like to do an intelligence check. What would be... Um... Well, that's cool. So where do those come up then? Those are going to come up like in the... In your handouts, like where your character sheet oh, is? nice. Yeah, I made these because there's so many of these little quests that I think you guys yeah. probably forget about did, them all. Did, so. did, did this young woman have like a exclamation mark above her yes. head when we came yes. here? Yes, and, and it will turn to a question mark or a, yeah, it'll yeah. change when you complete yeah. the quest. Dull. I guess there's a question mark. Now yeah, it's, it's, now it's, a, out. it's grayed out now. I'd like to do an intelligence <laughs> check as to what I know about Banshees. 
I don't know what sure. type of uh, knowledge that might be. Probably. I would. Hmm. It's definitely not nature. Religion. Um. Yeah, religion will work. Arcana, religion. Because they're they're undead, so. Okay. Religion, religion or arcana, either one would work. It will then be arcana. Okay. Fifteen. Uh, All right. Do I know about banshees? Yeah, I think you know something about them. Let's see. Eight. From from Roy's generous stories of the watch, because he is filled with little stories. He knows exactly one thing about banshees, and that is if they look you in the eyes, you turn to stone. <laughs> kind of like bass words. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> or anything some, with a P. Yeah. <laughs> some, some people got that joke. Other people didn't actually get that joke. Uh, banshees are badass. Uh, they are <laughs> undead. Really they are evil. Um, Elvish cursed. <laughs> Yeah, they are a spiteful creature formed from the spirit of a female elf. Uh, you guys would not have a prayer of defeating one of these in combat, so you're definitely going to want to try to Call be they're, nice. But they are, but they are fine. vain. They're known to be vain. Uh, this one is, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will... well, I'm 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 looking to see if this is a general thing for banshees. Uh, yeah. Um. So so usually in life they were elves blessed with great beauty. Um. But instead of using their beauty to bring joy to the world, they use their beauty to corrupt and co control others. Um. So I think. Hey, lady, you laugh. And that's, you know, part of the reason that they're cursed to be a banshee because they use their beauty for evil. Um, so I think it's safe to assume that most banshees would be vain, but um, uh, Sister Grail has actually learned about the actual hum or the elf that this banshee once was, and she was very vain as well. And she tells you that that's when she like went... Like nothing even happened. Like she was calling for her, and the banshee didn't even show herself. Mm, okay. So, but the comb should do it. She she thinks so. Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do, um, and we'll return to you once the banshee has accepted the comb. Is that the idea, or? Yeah. Well, oh. she she wants to know about this spell book that this oh, banshee this has. Spell book. Okay. Sure, yeah, there's no way I'm bringing that back to you. I'm going to keep that, but thanks for the info. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't actually say that. Um, oh, okay, um, so she, she supposedly knows the location of the spell book. Okay, okay. So, all right. I guess if you Good actually enough. found the spell book and brought that, that'd be, like, bonus. So, yeah, so bonus. it's a spell book from the legendary mage named Bojangle. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Coneyberry. <laughs> Bojangles Banshee book in Coneyberry. Coneyberry. Maybe it's Coneyberry. Coneyberry, yeah. Okay, so Roy looks around with a glove gauntleted hand for any exclamation marks. Um uh, hey, we're in the end, boy. Uh, some some other things guys, about about banshees, right just general things. Um they are immune to poison, uh cold damage and necrotic damage. Well, they are all my damage types. They are resistant to acid, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. That's, How about be all of them? Yeah, That's... yeah. Was force in there? No, they are not immune it's to force. Thing I use banshees are spooky ghosts, right? Yeah, they're they're yeah, pretty so yeah, they're pretty nasty. Is... I think force damage is like direct soul damage. Yeah, that's one of the few things that, and I think maybe psychic that can actually probably radiant. I doubt it's yeah, radiant. Thing I have psychic too. But yeah, we have a cleric. I... We don't have to worry about it. We have a cleric. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we don't have to fight the thing. Uh, I'm all for not fighting the thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there are people in the inn going in the things. All right, so the inn. Was there anything else you guys wanted to do at the shrine? Oh, well, let them do in stuff, but I don't think so. I just wanted to say a prayer to the shrine and then leave. 
Okay. Not saying anything particular. Okay. So the Stonehill Inn is in the center of town. It's a large, newly built roadhouse of field stone and rough-hewn timbers. The common room is filled with locals nursing mugs of ale or cider, all of them eyeing you with curiosity. Caboose, and this uh, is where you're looking at, and he makes a beeline to the kitchen. <laughs> Not worrying about if anyone's stopping him, he just walks straight into the kitchen. You see uh, a young human man who seems to be in charge. Uh, how much would five room? Oh, I guess. Yeah. Well, you can pay your own way, little NPC. How much would five rooms be? Five rooms. Let me see. Oh, can Brother Bad Tile not be shown up by Roy? Right. <laughs> Boop -a -doop -doo. <coughs> rooms, well, you, rooms. Where are the rooms? You can just like tell me later. Doesn't matter. It's all right. Now I now I found it. Oh. Uh, room. It would be eight silver for a room for a day. And meals would be another five for a day. And that's for five people or per piece? That's for one room and one person's meals. One gold, three silver per person. Yeah. 25, 50, 40, 65 gold, or silver pieces, the <laughs> gold pieces. Pay for everyone. Okay. And, uh, buy your own beer. So I will do five gold. 15 silvers and pay for everyone. Wow, what a guy. Well, it's only after, right. after all, Roy paid for my room last time. <laughs> yeah, for the uninitiated, Roy bought rooms and food for people last time. Also, I love the fact that Roy's um, little fact, the one fact he knows about Banshees, is spawned a discussion in chat. <laughs> Roy knows one fact about most mythical and exotic creatures. And, and they're, they're all wrong. Absolutely <laughs> true. They're they all are, true. They're true. They're all factual beyond a doubt. That's Just not for know. the creature he thinks they are for. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, there are after, after we get the rooms, I see Kapusta's like disappeared into the kitchen. Mm. And so while he's in the kitchen, um, uh, I talked to some of the curious people, giving them the blessings of Saluna, okay. and, uh, and and say, uh, "What is the news of this uh, since we've been gone?" Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Who are you talking to? You are talking to a gentleman named Narth. Narth. Yes, like he's Narth. he's a old farmer. And uh, he tells you that Sister Garail, who oversees the Shrine of Luck, left town for a few days not too long ago. And when she came back, she was wounded and exhausted. Hmm. Oh, bad day. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, what what you doing in the kitchen, man? Big kick. <laughs> Old for it. And then I take a slice and eat it, but then I go up to the um, um, innkeeper and I say, this should pay for my room, and I put it on the counter. <laughs> but your room's already paid for. And a cake like know. that, <laughs> the logistics of them having, you know, sugar, you need a cold, you got to make that topping. That's going to be... I, I know. Like, this is fantasy. I know, let I know. it go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's logistics of making that type so, of cake. So, so the it's halfling funny. is baking I know, I know, a cake. It's hard. I love it. All right. So, so you meet the the cook, whose name is Thelma. Um, since this is a character I'm making up, she'll actually have a name everyone can pronounce. Her name is Thelma, and uh, at first, she is like, "Who the hell are you? And what the hell are you doing in my kitchen?" Um, but then you start to, you know, work your magic and 
you're her new best friend. And you're like, yabba dabba do. And you're like yeah. trading secrets. You know, she's like, oh, have you tried ever using like a brown sugar glaze? And you're like, oh, well, have you ever tried using just a little bit of uh, lemon zest? And he, yeah. He follows every <laughs> piece of advice with a good cook always blank. Good cook always. <laughs> By the time you finish your cake, she's like asking you if, if, you know, you could stay and, and, you know, she's sure you, she could find you a position in her kitchen and. And are you, you single? Yeah. You guys could work some culinary magic together. Ooh, ladies. Ladies. Yeah. Oh no. I guess. Would Capusta cheat? Yes. Capusta would cheat. What are you married? Yeah. He's married. He's been married for 150 plus years. Well, where's your wife? <laughs> She's back in Calmport. Well, what's I'm, she I'm, think I'm, about you out adventuring and gallivanting I'm, I'm around? I'm delivering a commission piece because I'm an artist. <laughs> ah, did Don't she worry. buy that? Did she buy that line when you told her to to her? <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess you'll no, find out when you get I, home, right? Uh, what ties me into all of it is I got one of the rock seekers pay, uh, paid for a really nice meal and that's i'm trying to deliver it okay with okay. ingredients you can only find in call so awesome um so while he's baking a cake uh brother bad tile you'd, you'd have plenty of time to talk to some more folk in mm -hmm. the inn yeah i'm looking for news i'm looking for um what's it, i'm asking uh if anybody has seen Yarno or any of the Rock Seeker brothers. Okay. Let's see. We've got all kinds of stuff here. Um, not, nothing about that. Nobody knows about the Rock Seekers. And, and Sildar was, uh, was so hot to come here. I want to know what, you know, does he do anything as soon as we show up? Yeah, he, he bought himself a room and a meal, and yeah, he's eating and drinking and enjoying civilization after being tied up in a goblin cave for God knows how long. Yeah. Uh, one of the barmaids, uh, a girl named Elsa, uh, tells oh, you uh, that Darren Edermath, who keeps uh, an orchard nearby here, is a former adventurer just like you. Oh. Until he took an arrow to the knee? No, nope, no. Nope. He's Come on. What is this 2011? <laughs> All my jokes are like related. Some people get them and others don't. It's great. I'm on two sides of the fence here. Uh another gentleman, a miner named Lenar, tells you that orc raiders have been seen on the east end of Tribor Trail. The townmaster is looking for someone to run them off. Oh, who's and where's the town master? Is he up at the transgender manor? I mean, no, he is at the town master or the. Oh, town master's hall. Though. Yes, right there. Town master's hall. Oh, right in the middle of the town. <laughs> like, uh, who? Who? Well, actually, at this point, I think everybody can be at the inn. That's you you hear this or you hear oh my god you smell the smell of some delicious cake baking from the kitchen by the way this is a great inn i mean i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> of course uh capusta's specialty is desserts why are we not surprised <laughs> you know, he always buys his way through with desserts All right, I'll start blinking. All right, you want more rumors? I got more rumors. Oh. Yeah, we want rumors. Uh, let's see. Why are you blinking? <laughs> that's how I pick up rumors. Oh, <laughs> that's your looking. Whoa, for that's cool. I want blinking lights on my headset. <laughs> are, are you cleared for docking? I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> Space doors are open. <laughs> oh my god. I, I love I, I make a few too many Star Trek references for a fantasy game. I just realized that. All right. Uh Trelena, the innkeeper's wife, tells you uh mm -hmm. Thel Dendrar, a local woodcarver, 
stood up to the red brands a 10 day ago when they came by his shop and leered at his wife and said some not very nice things to her either. Uh, the ruffians murdered him. Several townsfolk saw it happen. The red brands grabbed his body and now his wife, daughter and son have gone missing too. Holy shit. Roy is on top of that. Dun, one. dun, dun. And who, who's leading a search for them? That's a good question. Who is leading a search? Would Survey the town says? master be in charge of that? Roy is now. Yeah. She says, well, um, the, the red brands have, have been a problem for a while now. And everybody's kind of scared of them. They're, uh, they're a mercenary company. There's, you know, quite a few of them and no one here is really equipped to stand up to them. Do they have a base? Where are they? Nope. Uh, they live in town? She says, well, they can usually be found hanging out at the, uh, what's it called? The sleeping giant, the tap house. They're there oh, they're pretty good. much day and night drinking themselves stupid. Much to get stupid. Roy stands up roughly. I know what I must do. But wait, Roy, there's this great dessert. She also tells you that they hassle every business in town, except for the Fandolin Miners Exchange. Um, for some reason, they don't seem to want trouble with Halia Thornton, who runs it. Spooky. Mm -hmm. The mining pick. Yeah, it's a dangerous weapon in the right hands. And uh, a young boy who's kind of hanging out in the uh, in the inn, eating uh, eating some kind of like donut kind of thing. I forget what they're called in fantasy worlds. Um, <laughs> there's actually a term for him. I can't remember. Um, he says that Kellen Alderleaf's son, Carp said he'd found a secret tunnel in the woods after the red brands almost caught him. They, they chased him through the woods and he found some secret tunnel. And yeah, people start talking about the red brands and like it, it kind of changes the mood in the room. Yeah. Like people do not um, like these guys, you know, when people like start like red bread, red bread, red bread, rabble, rabble. Um, <laughs> they say that too. They're like rabble, rabble. Like experience with dealing kind of like punks. Um, that's kind of his forte. Uh, so he's going to look around the room and like when everybody starts rabble, rabble, red brand, has anybody like suspiciously like got up and like left? <laughs> no, no. That would be cool though. Because he's worried that, you know. He doesn't want someone to kick down that door and go, Oi, mate, we've heard you be talking. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're pirates. Land <laughs> pirates. Yeah, I thankfully, they don't really come here. They they like the uh, the Sleeping Giant. Has stronger I'm beer. Sorry, stronger beer, you say? Well, reservations <laughs> <laughs> can be made with these hooligans. <laughs> yeah. Red brands are at the top of Roy's list. He, he has pushed aside the dwarves and activated red brand numero uno as his main quest. I have to leave in a, about 35 minutes. Yep, that, yeah, we should be done then. I won't go over an hour this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what do you guys want to do? Sunlight on you? Is that natural sunlight? Or is that just a light? Are you near a window? Because I'm really jealous of you right now. Who? Me? John. Oh. What? Me? Yeah. Um, this window over there, yeah. Oh, Man, nice. I'm so jealous of you right now. It's dark here. Where do you here. live that has light? <laughs> I live in Bend. In, in where? Bend. Oregon. Bend? They're, Oregon. They're like three hours oh. behind us. No, duh, he's three hours behind us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I... I See, when, when I say I have to leave, it's because Allison wants to eat dinner. Ah, because it's 7 <laughs> o'clock. Okay, got it. Yeah, I, I think I'm in trouble because I kept him too late last time. 
yeah. his wife was I get hungry. Trouble, actually, like, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't have any black eyes, so that's good. That's good. If there's any physical damage, we can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think in 30 minutes we could beat up ruffians. Yeah. Roy yeah. Roy stands up after hearing enough about these ruffian murder, all of this. Like, this is the kind of stuff he dealt with in The Watch. Because people, innocent people get hurt. And nobody does anything about it because he has to deal with the Neverwinter Guards, which are bad people, generally. And you know, so this is his, this is his fort. Uh, okay. How many of these uh, ruffians are there? Uh, let's see. Friends. Nobody really knows for sure. They kind of come and go. They're not like they see different faces. So there well, seems to be quite a few of them. And are they from the population of Fandolin, or have they come from elsewhere? No, they've they've come from elsewhere, and uh, they it's assumed that they have some kind of base somewhere outside of town, but nobody here knows where it is. Well, how many people does the sleeping giant hold? It? We're going to see a hundred there, or ten? Oh, probably probably ten or less, probably less than that. There's usually just a few of them in there. Roy likes those numbers. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> it's actually just in front of the nice. town hall, by the way. Oh. Just uh, FYI, he's not in there. After baking, which, by the way, would have took a solid cake. Uh, you know, I know. Two it's hours, three. So. Yeah, they don't have a microwave. Yeah, yeah but he is a half -life. Cake in a this microwave. Is true. They can do things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what time is it roughly? I mean, it's probably a good thought. Um, it's it's like probably early evening. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, Roy is totally up for getting some answers, exacting vengeance. Okay. Well. Around. Exactly. No, no reason to be implied about this, Roy. But I'll I'll back you up. Doing duty of any just and good man. And he keeps any opinions about the weakness of the townsfolk to himself. Wait, where does this town like have a town guard, or do they just have like or, like community policing? Like, who let this band of ruffians sure. get out of hand? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a pretty pretty small town so they they have the uh like the town master but they don't really have like actual an actual guard they're kind of self-managed scenario they may go all frankenstein riot yeah you might have some farmers with pitchforks that kind of thing yeah. but okay so roy expects no help from the monster the <laughs> we got this all right so you guys are heading to the sleeping giant but where's Capusta? Are you guys going to go grab him out of the kitchen? Uh, supposedly, he is hall. now at the town master's hall. In front of it, trying to sell some really shitty cookies and brownies I made. <laughs> He's got like a like a thay little bake sale, like little mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. bake sale. He's trying to well, make money. Well, I mean, money. not, not that much time has well. passed. So probably oh, yeah. about this time, Capusta, you've put the, the cake in the oven. And, and you're okay. like... Watching it bake, okay. <laughs> like rubbing your hands gleefully. Mmm, it's gonna be a good fucking cake. Yeah. <laughs> well, Why don't you come with us, and then uh, your cake will be ready when we're done. Uh, I'll tell the other cook just to watch it. Yeah, take it out and, and precisely like thirty minutes and twenty nine seconds. You just. Okay. As a good cook would. Yeah. It's, uh... I asked, what are we doing? What are we up to? I'm gonna go knock some heads, my good, good, my good bear. Boy's got a head of steam, and uh, I don't blame him. And we fill you in. Okay. So I say they're at the Sleeping Giant, right? Mm-hmm. So they're there to eat and drink, right? Right. They do not poison them. I, I, I was just saying. What are all these rules, right? I would like to poison them. 
<laughs> no, no, actually, no. <laughs> That's a good roll of one. <laughs> just make him sick, not kill poison. Okay, I can was like, that. wait, did Brother Vatile just like say, yeah, let's poison these? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't. I was just joking. I didn't know yeah. he was gonna go with it. <laughs> no, like, Caprice is just like, let's just poison them. I mean, yeah, like, we'll not have good... any poison. What? I will... Roy, Roy, what's see them good... fall. Roy, a good chef, does not make a mess. And I don't see a difference in between going in there, breaking their heads in with a mace and stabbing them with a sword, and, or going in there and making them eat and, you know, maybe keel over. Go back to your cake if you must, Kapusta. But I am no chef. I might as well just be the butcher. And he marches off. I'll follow Roy. Yeah. <laughs> I have to stay closer, Roy. Okay. I'm following behind. Kapusta runs in front. <laughs> I mean, Kapusta, <laughs> don't poison anybody to death. If they get a little... <laughs> don't you have a land speed of like 25? You can't I... keep up. <laughs> he's, double, he's doing a double move. I, I'm, doing, I'm doing a double move and I'm casting Long Strider on myself. <laughs> And he's high on sugar, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you're going to stop this moving mass of man and metal. Um, well, I guess you could, but I don't recommend it. So, yeah. Roy full steams ahead to the sleeping giant. Yeah. All right. So, Wanted you guys to get to see my wonderful little map oh, here I made. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> got this log here and these miscellaneous did you go to art school ponds. yeah i i did i'm hiding my true talents so this is like um a really like one of those long tables that like a shit ton of people can sit at and then there's two big round tables and then there's the bar with some stools and you see like there's actually only like two or three townsfolk in here um and then there's these four guys that are very rough looking. They've all got lots of scars. Um, they're like doing shots at the bar. Good. I, I hope they're drunk for this. Make their screams a little quieter. And do they all have like giant red brands on their faces or something ridiculous? <laughs> no, they're not quite that bad. Uh, um, so the sleeping giant is a ramshackle tap room at the east end of town. You see uh, four human ruffians inside. Hello. They all wear grimy scarlet cloaks, and their sullen stares fix on you as you approach. An approach, Roy does. See, and he's not here. He's not. No time to be tempered by Brother Bad Tile either. That's right. Just an example. So, um, you know. Do I get it? Um, I'm gonna hit myself with false life. Okay. Um, wow, this is a big place. I'm going to cast Mage Armor. Okay, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Well, your Mage Armor is always up, isn't it? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, you don't no, have to cast it. For some don't. reason, you forget or can't. You know. Yeah. But yeah, it's always up. So one of, the, one of these guys says, Well, well, here's a whole pack of little puppies. What do you want, puppies? Come here to bark at us. You are here to answer for the death of that guy's name and for <laughs> potentially the, the disappearance of his loved ones. Uh, <laughs> I am the law. Frontier justice, a la <laughs> Grandpa. Yeah. Uh, his Judge Dread helmet. <laughs> Pulls out his giant handgun. Oh, All right. Are we uh, initiative? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Roy's, yeah. yeah. Roy's already had his little spiel. <laughs> they're to exact justice. Just kind of ill tempered. I mean, they're clearly the people I would hope. Yeah, if they're hooligans, they deserve the play. All right. Play. Alatar. You got. You get to go first. No. No. Has anybody like? Is violence started? Not yet, but it looks like it's about to. They and all we're starting up, it. Like, Huh? 
and we're starting it. I I don't know. Are you? We're always starting it. <laughs> Just everybody started casting spells, so I called for initiative. Yeah. So we're yeah, I guess you guys are starting it. <laughs> I go. We could probably My spell get... was defensive in nature, just to... right, oh, right, yeah. right. That's but... a good idea. I, and I, and I and can... LF, you did you did cast your spell before this, but oh, sweet, okay. I just when people start casting combat spells, I'm just like, let's do initiative. <laughs> yep, cool. So Alatar, what would you like to do? If the closest guy right here. Oh wow, that is really big, action. isn't it? Yeah, it's. This is the hugest tavern in the world. Yeah. It's 60 foot from the door to the bar. That's um, all right. But, um. This isn't drawn to scale, guys, okay? <laughs> just the closest guy, if he goes to attack Roy, if Roy, like, attacks him, he's going to cast Dissonant Whispers on him. Fucking cruel okay. Duranthar all over again. Like, we don't need this, people. <laughs> Yeah, and this is not to scale. So you guys, like, in one move, you can be up on these guys. Because I didn't even pay attention to how many squares it was. So it's not to scale. <laughs> Have all the distances. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, if an enemy attacks, he's going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. Roy. Um, They haven't, like, drawn swords yet or anything. No, they're just kind of jeering at you at this point. Okay. Um, Roy... How do I want to play this? Um, he's not going to be the first. Well, he might be the first to draw blood, but not with steel. So he does have a shield. Um, but uh, for all intents and purposes, he's going to move up. And he is just going to... He's going to... I don't know. He's going to sock the dude right in the jaw, I think. <laughs> nice. Um, which I, I, I guess I just roll. And then... Uh, so I'm not proficient and unarmed. Right. So it's just, just a strength. I 20 plus three, and then I do four damage, I assume. Uh, yeah, it's one plus your bonus, right? Yeah. Is that how it works? So, so boom! Oh, wow. crit! <laughs> what? So take uh, eight points of bludgeoning damage. When I think you just double the one. Oh, okay. Um, so, so it'd be yeah. five? Five points of... So Roy walks up to the it's dude. It's still pretty he, like, awesome. He like grabs him by like the nape or whatever, and then he slams him backwards against the Did, bar. Really didn't even tell him anything. To, yeah. Like, are we yeah. just bandits? Yeah. Roy. Roy yelled out why he was here. Oh, I, I didn't get that. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. He's, he's there. They're a, there to answer for the murder of the dude, and you're in suspicion of the uh, whatnot. So he's there to like arrest them. I guess. Nice. Um, though it might, you know, kill them or whatever. So yeah, so you, he'll, you punch him. So That's he great. comes up and I just, just like slam him against the, the bar. Um, <laughs> and that'll be my turn. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Brother bad tile. He, he walks up a bit <laughs> and, um, and he's all for, uh, making an arrest. Okay. Uh, and and he, he says, Surrender now. This man is an officer of the law. I bless this arrest. Uh, <laughs> I bless this mess. Nice. So who and, are the three uh, so people you're blessing? This gives everybody a D4 on their attack and saving throws for this battle. And uh, you can actually put this on your character sheet um, yeah. on the uh, core stats page. Yeah. Yep. So who are you blessing? You can bless three people. Uh, yes. I bless, um, of course, uh, Roy, and um, I've seen um, that uh, Altar has something ready, so I will bless him. Okay. And uh, I, I'm not sure about the, the bake sale, so, so the <laughs> third one's going to go to Lake. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And remind so that... me to buy manacles because I'm turning Roy into a straight up cop. Nice, I like it. So are we? Um, we just add one d4 to what melee, ranged, and uh, to a, uh, attack and saving throws. 
Oh, attack and save. Nice. For up to one minute. Yeah, I just saw that the other day on uh, Dwayne's sheet for his thing that you could do that. I was like, how cool is that? Well, well I'm, I'm still not clear how we do it. Are we... Uh, you go to the uh, core stats, and on the bottom left, where it says uh, melee and melee and, uh, ranged and spell casting. Yeah, and put one d four. Put in four. Guy four. One guy. One d four. Okay. Not not the number. Oh, okay. Whoops. Attack roll or saving throw. Yeah. So all the attack rolls and all the saving throws. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. All right. I guess I'm, I feel like I should do an attack roll then, I suppose. Um, or a saving throw. Or a saving. And these guys are all within 30 feet. Like I said, the scale is not right. So don't worry about that. Okay. Within 30 feet of each other or 30 feet of us? 30 feet of you. So the people okay. at the door, they're within 30 feet of you. Easy. Okay. Um, I would like to target one of these guys. With I don't know, you know, I'd like to just delay because I don't really know what's going to happen yet. So I don't really okay. want to do too much of anything. Um, but I know that's not really a thing. I suppose the first I'll I'll, I'll make my trigger the first one that attacks any of us. I'm okay. Gonna hit with a ray of frost. Cool. Hmm. Kapusta. So, on any of the round tables or banquet tables, there are like bottles on there. Yeah, sure. Okay, so he's gonna pick one up, bring it against the table. <laughs> okay. And scary halfling. <laughs> and he's going to hide under the table. And as and as their reaction, if any you know of them try to get under the table, he's gonna stab him with the broken bottle. Okay. If only you had the tavern brawler feet, and then you can make that a viable thing to do. Like it's still viable, but like super viable. <laughs> awesome. All right. So uh, this ruffian right here by Roy pulls out a short sword. Oh shit! He goes to steal. Yep, and he is going to attack Roy. So those of you that have reactions that would be triggered can go ahead and do that first. So that's a 10. That's, that'll miss. Was there anybody else? No? Oh, just an uh, Ignore those right. attacks. I don't know why it's there. The DC save is 13 wisdom. Okay. Um, on the uh, on the spell, there'll be a little box that says attack. You can just uncheck that, and it won't. Yeah, show I didn't that know anymore. why I had attack on there. <laughs> um, let's see, wisdom save. You said. Yes. You see thirteen. Okay. He fails. 11. He takes eleven psychic damage and Whoa. has to run away from me. Well, he can't run away because he is down. Nope. Holy crap. 11 damage? Are you kidding me? Holy crap. 3 die 6. Level nice. 1 spell. Nice. You but definitely that's, rolled that's above average. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I guess you didn't. That that was pretty average. Wow. Impressive. All right. So, I guess he doesn't get a go. <laughs> he like pulls out his sword and he's like ah. Don't pull out any swords, gentlemen. <laughs> I wonder if that'd be viable. Like, if I could multi-class Roy into a barbarian and say his rage is just his blind justice. <laughs> All right, this guy runs up to Roy, pulls out his sword. Oh, they didn't listen. Nope. They never I did listened. warn them. Yeah. 14, is that a hit? Just smashes his, his, his sword okay. away. Um, let's see. This guy's going to run up and swing at Roy. Get him, boys! Going to hit me. Okay. Oh, hang on. They get multiple attacks. Oh, good. So that was actually the second attack of the first guy. Okay. So. Whoops. No, not two dice. 
They're not that badass. Three piercing damage. Zero damage. Nice. And then the other one attacks. Oh, crit. crit. For eight piercing. And he attacks again. Seven. That's a miss, I'm sure. Well, he's not feeling these blows like he would have a day ago. <laughs> so this final guy is actually going to run at the wizard. And so he's going to run by you, Capusta. So you can swing your broken bottle at him if you want. Okay. So just... Uh... Uh, that'll be a strength roll with out proficiency and with disadvantage because you're using an improvised weapon so how should i roll that so one just do a, like a strength check on your sheet with disadvantage or yeah I, I guess just roll disadvantage with your strength bonus however you want to do that or negative <laughs> i assume Capusta's is not that buff you got this. Right, this is what I'm gonna do. Roll. Swish. Miss. What's your uh, strength bonus? Oh. My strength bonus is. Or actually, you could do dex, one. whichever's higher. Uh, so plus two, so thirteen on. Okay, the thirteen. Oh, you have disadvantage, so it's lower. Yeah, you just um, you actually hit him, but it doesn't get through his leather armor. Very close. All right. So we do. Yeah. sharp but not actually that sharp so I'm going to say um, that it actually takes him a double move to get to Ellis because he had to like go around tables and shit so he can't actually attack you yeah. yeah he can't attack you but he <laughs> runs up and he's like waving his sword in your face oh lewd Alatar <laughs> his sword <laughs> That's what we call him in PG land. Iron sword. So, let's this not go guy, down that road. This guy that ran up to the wizard yeah. is going to have an Eldritch Blast Ooh. go in his face. Eldritch. <laughs> Eldritch. Ooh. 18. Uh, that'll do it. Two. Four damage. And that's the one that you can keep doing it every turn now? Uh, uh, no, that's just my own cantrip. If oh, only. If only, huh? <laughs> All right, you uh, you blast him. Roy. Hey, Roy will fetch up his long sword um, and attack the guy straight ahead of him. Wow. Wow. So it's red because it's blessed. Oh. So that's a 14? Mm-hmm. That is a hit. Eight points of slashing. Straight ahead. You bloody him. And I action surge. Ooh. And fuck up that action surge. <laughs> um, and then Roy is going to... That would have been... That have probably killed him, I'm going to assume, sadly. Yes, um, it would have. Roy is going to sidestep one okay. and be done. All right, brother, bad tile. Well, this doesn't look good. I thought I told you not to draw steel. I didn't want to kill you. Now you must die. And, uh, <laughs> this guy is very go. agile. He's just dancing around. Ah, can't hit me. Can't hit me, little puppy. Elif. I can't hear you, Dwayne. Muted. Elith extends her hand and a blast of poisonous spores shoot out. Nice. Oh, and nice. Now he has to make a DC 12 constitution save. Okay. Oh, we made it. Oh, sorry, I did private roll. He rolled a 15. <laughs> right. Keep doing that. that happens. I need to move that button away so I don't do that anymore. Um, That's it. So nothing happens if he saves? Okay. Nope. Bummer. That's just a cantrip. Capusta. All right. Capusta takes all out two of his walks, starts drumming on him, and by doing so, he casts 
prayer, uh, fire. Aw. Who are you ferrying, firing? Um, I think you can do a couple. Yeah. Oh, in a cube. Yeah, nice. 20 foot cube. And so. So you could do these guys over here. That video is yeah. way too quiet. Yeah, it is. But that is. All right, so people now have advantage to hit them. Is that right? Uh, if they do, they need to do dex. Save. Well, dex. Oh, wow! They really, they really changed some of these spells. Okay. Uh, I didn't notice that fairy fire had a save. Okay, so one fails and the other one succeeds. So one of them is fairy fired. Um, do we have a nice fairy fire icon here? Oh, we do. Look at that. That'll work. Too bad it's not purple, but all right. So people have advantage to hit him. Sweet, Alatar. Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> uh, I must have deleted the dude I rolled initiative for. <laughs> you keep doing that. Buddy. Yeah. Anybody they remember what last. their initiative was? It's their turn. They were last. Yeah. They had Oops. like a. Negative one. Ten. They had a ten. I had like a ten, yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, some swords flying at Roy. Ugh. Ten. Ting. Crit again. Crit? Oh my god. They they either miss or crit. It seems like. Eight piercing. Five. And a six is gonna ten. miss. And Dang. another six. He can only keep up with so many hits. Let's see. Gonna Who is this guy going to... Who is he going to attack? Brother Bad Tile. A 10. Yes. And a 19. One hit. Whoops. Not 12 dice. That would not be good. Five piercing damage. He stabs at you with his sword. Roy. Alatar. Nope, it's me. Oh, I sorry. Alatar. <laughs> Getting trigger happy um, again. Uh -oh. This guy right here. Oh, I'm in the wrong button. This one right here. The one that was fairy fire. Yeah. He's getting a ray of sickness shot at him. Oh. Too. Down with the sickness. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> with advantage. <laughs> I didn't need that advantage. for nine poison damage, nice. and he must make a DC 13 con save. Okay, so he takes the damage regardless, but if he makes the save, he's not poisoned. Is that how it works? Yeah. Cool. All right, con. If he fails it, he's poisoned for a turn. He succeeds, but you uh, he is bloodied now. All right, There's Brother Bad Tile. It's actually my turn. Oh, right. I keep um, that look. <laughs> so, um, Here, I'll drag, drag you up so I... Uh... Uh, so Roy's going to roll his shoulders and gain back 11 HP. Okay. <laughs> with his healing. Uh, second win, sorry. Not healing surge. Um, and go up to full. You can um, call it healing surge if you want. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> and he's... And he will attack the marked ruffian. Okay. With advantage. With advantage. Oh. Yeah. Eighteen for nine slashing. He didn't get a crit. I didn't crit anything. That's just the. That's D4. just some nonsense with bless. Yeah. Oh, you way, kill him. A, oh, you got a four on the four yeah. setter. But you need a concentration check on that bless too if you took damage. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah. So, but well, a fourteen. So easy to forget. Probably, I think. And is that on the uh, course sheet? It's, it's a, a con save. Yeah. Okay, con save. Yep. Yep, he made it. Got it. Nice. Awesome. So that stands. Thanks for the reminder. And then Roy is going to. We always forget those. Here <laughs> and be done with his turn. Okay. Now it is brother bed. Take this one alive. Roy yells. Brother, b -b 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 bad tile. At least one of them. No way. <laughs> the jokes are getting worse as it gets later. <laughs> I, I should just stop. <laughs> okay. 
Does 15 hit? Uh, yes. Okay, four bludgeoning. Nice. You clock him. Elith. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the short sword so at least I can get take advantage of that uh, bless. Okay. And here we go. Nice. 20 for three hole piercing. <laughs> Poke. You guys are working them down. Capusta. Uh, continuing with his hang, hang drum, he will uh, cast True Strike okay. on, I guess, our favorite brother. No, no, I'm going to cast on Roy. <laughs> <laughs> he just dangles it and then yanks it away. <laughs> yeah, I'll cast on Roy. The All way right. true strike actually works, you pick a target, an enemy, instead of a person. Okay, then I'm this this guy. Oh, that's that's good to know. Yep, that okay. is good to know. I was reading up on it. I must have misread it completely then. All right, that is a nine versus Roy and a five versus Roy. And the other guy is going to swing at Brother Bad Tile again. A 21. Hit. That's got to hit. For seven piercing, and he follows it up with a fifteen. No, Miss. probably not. Yes. Miss. Miss. Okay. So uh, seven piercing. Yes. The second attack misses Alatar. By uh, the guy that just attacked brother, Bad Tile is going to have an Eldritch Blast shot at him. Okay. So to clarify for Kyle. Um, True Strike actually only works for you. It's your next attack. Really? Oh, yep. that's good to know. 24 for 7 force damage. Uh, you destroy him. Luckily, we've never actually um, <laughs> hit anyone that's been <laughs> So, yeah, but it's... it's hey, you, magic has been wild lately. Sometimes it does weird things. So, pretty much, you're <laughs> calling out next turn that you're going to hit the dude. You're, you're um, what's his face? That sucks, because I'm trying to find, like, really buffing stuff, you know? That'd be neat. Um, yeah. Well, you definitely have some spells that can do that, but, yeah, yeah. cantrips okay. are very limited. Roy's turn? Yes. Awesome. Roy is going to cut. He's going to slang forth. And if that would kill him, Roy is not going to kill him. Uh, no, it will not. But. Very close. Brother Bad Tile. Take him alive! And I'm not trying not to do Steve's voice for freaking Ooth Group. <laughs> I don't want to be. Take him alive, guy. damn it! Hold yeah. the line! I gotta. I don't know. I can feel like a gruff old man. This voice does not. Do okay, it. so I can heal 10 points of damage. Nice. And I think I'm the only one wounded, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Just Roy healed himself. Okay, so I'll do it on me. Yay. Cool. Preserve life. Elith. So there's one guy left, huh? I think yeah. my Ray of Frost. Can I choose not to kill somebody with a Ray of Frost? Uh, no, it has to be a melee attack. Because you control um, the blow. Run up to him, punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I think I have a different idea. Uh-oh, I'm spooked. It's called Charm Person. Oh, that's a good one. There's a range of 30 feet. I assume I have the range, right? Yeah. 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 I attempt to charge him. He must make a wisdom saving throw. Of. Oh. Uh, yeah, he made it. Damn. He even had a minus one. He's not charmed. I think he would have had uh, advantage on the roll anyway because we're attacking him. But Oh, okay. That's my turn. Capusta. All right. I guess since I true strike them, I'm going to go up to them and okay. meet Cleaver Room. Okay. Sure. Don't kill him. Oh, uh, I'll attack. I guess I'll... Just I say will... you're attempting to knock him out if you... Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll non lethally attack him. Okay. Uh, yes, you do so. 
You knock him out. I just do the blunt side and do it. Yeah, the blunt side to smack him with it. Okay. Wham! Nice. Nice. Well so done, guys. Wrap up for John. All yeah, right, yeah, we'll wrap go. up. John's got to go. Uh, you guys interrogate. Yeah. Wrap up. <laughs> I mean, we wrap up for yeah. next Monday. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, 80 XP, guys. 8 0. And yeah, we'll we'll reconvene on Monday. Cool. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, actually, Roy binds the unconscious rock. <laughs> um, and buy manacles. It's on the shopping list. Gotcha. And thanks and, for coming, uh, everyone in the audience. Save, it was uh, fun. Save playing Tyranny of Dav Dragons on Thursday. Yes, Tyranny on Thursday. Cool. All right. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah. Princess of Apocalypse begins this Friday. Princess of Apocalypse yeah. this Friday. Yeah, this remember, is a great we'll week. Half hour later, so yeah. Yep. Um, it's six o'clock here. It'd be five o'clock for everybody else. Yep. Other way yep. around. Yeah. Oh, is that? Yeah, I was good there. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys right. later. Thanks, guys. Yeah. We're starting a half an hour after we yeah. normally start Tyranny of Dragons, right? Yes. Right. right. Yes. yes. So seven o'clock for me. Yeah. Yep. Seven yep. o'clock for the Beast Coast. The um, Beast Coast. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> daylight Time. Whatever. It is. All right, guys. See, see you later. Thursday. Bye bye. Right. And thank you everyone for watching. And again, we will be playing uh, this Thursday our usual Tyranny of Dragons campaign. Um, that will be at six thirty Eastern, and then Friday. Dwayne is starting the Princes of the Apocalypse campaign. He's going to be running that, and we're starting that at 7 Eastern time on Friday. So hope to see you guys there.